Anyway, so we are going to um, show you how to build amazing VR. We, we think it's amazing. Engaging VR experiences with Angular and a bunch of other technologies like RxJS. How many RxJS people, users here? Observables. That's how we say it. Yeah. Anyway, so, um, and we got a small surprise for you. Yesterday morning, there was a little twist in the plot. After we watched the movie, how many of you watched it, by the way? Quite a few. So after we watched the movie, we decided to upgrade the workshop with a new device. And I need to mute my phone, so please do it yourself. Uh, make your phone on silence. Um, and uh, we have a surprise for you. It was unplanned, but we worked yesterday for the entire day to add this to the workshop. It will come later, but let's start with the plain VR thing. So, welcome to our workshop. Today we are going to do VR, but first of all, real quick few, uh, words about us. So, Alex, introduce yourself. Hi. My name is Alex Castillo. I'm a Google developer expert. Um, I'm super passionate about the human brain. Uh, I, I do a lot of projects, including neurotechnology, uh, Angular, React, and um, this is my favorite conference. This is where most of my friends are, so I'm happy to meet you guys. Welcome. Thank you, Alex. And uh, myself, Uri, I love to do projects involving new technologies, so VR, electronics, robotics, whatever you want. Just you can check out my uh, blog here and read about what I do. And without further ado, I want to say, first of all, thanks for a friend, Monica Karova, who really helped us with the workshop. She couldn't be here today. Uh, but thank you, Monica, for uh, helping us to put this together. And uh, let's speak about our inspiration for the workshop. So, of course, Ready Player One, I asked about the movie. How many of you have read the book? Even more. So who thinks the movie is better? Who thinks the book is better? Who doesn't think at all? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for being honest. And the other inspiration, if you uh, watched the movie or you uh, grew in the 90s, 80s, you probably know Invaders, Space Invaders. We are going to uh, create a little Space Invaders, but the plot is going to be a little bit different. Instead of protecting the Earth against space invaders, we are actually going to be space invaders, yeah. and we are going to do the space invader ceremony. This ceremony happens when the space invaders are getting ready, ready to invade a new planet. So we are going to do the ceremony. Alex is going to be the master of ceremony, and he will throw balls of energy at you, the invader players. In real life. No. Yeah, but don't tell them about the surprise yet. Of course not. In real life. Um, and you will have to jump and catch them. But before you can do that, we have to write a code for that. Let's go with virtual reality. So, Pretty this accurate. is virtual reality. Yeah. This is virtual reality. That's how I feel. Right. Immersive experience. We want to fool our brains to think we are in a different world. Not real. Don't be fooled. And we have the headset, of course, and we have controllers, so we have a lot of gadgets that let us manipulate the virtual world. Anyone missing one of the cardboards? Please raise your hands. Okay, so we have one. Okay, and today we have, as I mentioned, we have a surprise. It's related to the controllers you part. One. But I gone quiet. Uh, Soundman, can you fix this? Okay, perfect. But more on that later. Uh, so, without further ado, let's go. I want everyone uh, to follow this really uh, quick introduction to WebGL. In order to create 3D worlds uh, for VR, we need to use uh, some technology, and WebGL is how we create 3D for the web. It's pretty easy, so, huh? yeah, it should be fairly easy, just a few lines of code, and then we'll see the amazing result. So, first of all, we uh, create again a canvas, we create a new WebGL context, we clear the viewport, so we have a black screen, uh, we create a buffer of verticals, so we know where to draw the point. Yeah, we create knows. a vertex shader, we'll explain that later, it's not important. Uh, we'll create a fragment shader that gives color to the points. Um, then we need to compile the shaders, create a program, attach the shaders to the program, link it, use it, of course. Then I have no idea why this is needed, but I, I don't know why it's needed. No one knows. And finally, we draw the array of 
all these things that we did, and we get this really amazing result. It was worth writing all this code in order to get a pixel on the screen. So this is WebGL, and when I first saw it, this is how I felt, and I didn't want to do, whoa, it's, it's shocked, it doesn't want to move to the next slide. I'll try, yeah, this is how I felt. I didn't do, want to do any 3D on the web anymore. Luckily, things have got a little better thanks to Mozilla, which created a new library called A-Frame. It's based on web components, and it makes VR a little bit easier than what we have, you have just seen. So, uh, how many of you watch the Stack Blitz talk? So, for those who don't know, you are going to meet Stack Blitz now. I really, really loved it when I saw the talk, so I decided to try to use it for the demo. Uh, which basically means you are going to open this URL, uh, https urich.org slash VR, and if everything works, you will see the um, uh, new Angular app page. So this is https urich.org slash VR. While you are connected, um, I will wait for a moment uh, because it will probably take some time for the page to load. Have anybody got it loaded on their phones or laptops? Yeah. And how yeah. is people doing uh, with the headsets? Uh, w were you able to put it together pretty easy, huh? Yeah, five steps. If anyone has questions about how to put it together, yes. Maybe you could. Yeah. So while you are getting uh, connected to this experience, can anybody show me your screen or phone just so I see that it works? Okay, perfect. I see a lot of Angular logos. I should have, ta have taken a selfie with that. So I hope everybody had a good time uh, getting connected. We are not getting sound off. Okay, so right now we are going to switch to the coding mode. And in coding mode, you have this welcome app. I'm going to check that it works for you. If it works for you, you should see the uh, word. It works on your screen. It should live reload. Does it work for anybody? Do you see it works on your screen? Look at your own screen. Yes, so yeah. we have an early bird. Cool. So Stacklebits works. Right now, I have no idea why I don't see the amount of people connected. It should have shown to me. I think people are still waiting. Yeah, is it still loading for people? Oh, it there works. You go. Yeah, perfect. It works. So, since it works, we can start coding with A frame. And for that, we are going to use the custom components, custom elements that A frame introduced into uh, HTML. Uh, the first one is called ASYN, it's just a wrapper for all our uh, virtual reality. And it's not happy because Angular does not recognize this uh, ASYN component. Therefore, it gives us a hint, if ASYN is a web component, which is it, it is, we need to add a custom element schema to our ng model schema. Let's do that. Um, by the way, everything we do here, this is our app module, which is just a few imports we'll use later. Everything we do here is also written in our GitHub repo, and we prepared a playbook for you, which you can follow later with everything that we did. So no worries if you uh, miss one or two parts. So we are going to add this custom element schema to our schemas part of uh, the uh, application. I have to get used to this editor. And it will still say it works. Uh, it shouldn't, oh, it should. I removed it. And the next thing we are going to do, we are going to add some uh, 3D object. That would be a sphere. And we will position it, uh, we'll give it a position of x0, y uh, 1.5, z minus 5. So it's into the screen and you can see it. Um, let's also give it a color. I love eating salmon, so let's make it a salmon color. Yeah, that's a valid HTML color. And it's still not happy. Maybe I have to uh, just make it realize that I changed the file. And I guess you can all see now this sphere on your screen. Anybody sees it? Do you get it on your phone or your computer? Yeah, yeah, not on this screen, on your phone. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah, yeah, technology works. Oh, wait. Awesome. OK. Say so, again. At this point, you can probably look around by moving with your uh, mouse or with just your phone. It should work. If you want, you can try it with your VR headset. And while we are at it, let's add some more interest to this scene. Let's add sky. And the sky color will, of course, be sky blue. 
Ah, I hate this. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, these quotes. But we got a Skype, nice. and I think the next thing we want to add, we want to add some uh, reference, some floor. So we'll add a plane, a colorful, yellow-colored plane. Uh, we can give it a um, size of uh, five by five. The sizes are in meters. I know we are the, in the US, but this was created uh, with uh, imperial units, with metric units in mind. And then um, let's also give it a position of uh, 0, 0, minus 5, just below um, the sphere. And when we are saving, we should see there is a sphere and there is a plane, but the orientation of the plane is incorrect. It's, what about uh, some rotation? Yeah, great idea. Let's do some rotation so it will be uh, perpendicular to the sphere. And nice. well, Hmm? Nice. Thank you. And now we have this uh, sphere and... Uh, what about some shadows? That's a good idea. Let's add some shadows. Let's just add this shadow attribute to the sphere and to the plan. And they should both participate in the shadow system. So now we got um, some kind of a low world to A-frame. So you're telling me that we just... A few, a few HTML elements were able to get a 3D scene with sky, with a ball, with shadow, and you can actually see it in 3D and in a virtual reality setting. Right, just five lines of code. Compare it with what we had with WebGL. For that pixel, I think that's pretty good bang for the buck. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, so, now we have like the basic world and we want to get you into this world. So we are going to use Firebase for that. We already created some uh, service called um, the user present service. And this service has a lot of code. We are not going to go over it. You can do it later at home. But there are two important things. You can see that whenever this, in the constructor, we actually create um, a new user ref object, which has a random color and random X and Z position. So whenever uh, this uh, scene loads on one of your laptops or phone, you will actually be given a random color, random X and Z, and this will be pushed to Firebase. I see, so it basically sends it to Firebase to the cloud uh, with some custom color, so everyone that joins has their own user objects in Firebase. Right, with a color and position, That's good great. point. And then we have this observable, don't worry about this code, basically it will give us an array of the users that are currently logged in. And we are going to bind it to the sphere. So, so let's go back to our, uh, first of all, let's go to our component and inject this service. Uh, I'm going to cheat here and use a snippet. Yeah, it worked. Nice. Thanks. So these are the services that we're going to be using throughout the workshop, huh? Yeah. Good. So that's a little spoiler. And let's add this user presence, which is of type user presence. And this is Angular dependence injection that we're using in the constructor of the component class. Right. So we are going to use uh, to take the user's observable from there. Users dollar equals user presence. This dot user presence. So I was always curious about that dollar sign, but that is pretty much is semantic for this is a type of observable. So when you're working with it, you know to treat it especially as an observable. Right. It just reminds me that this is an observable. It's just a coding convention. Good yeah. point, Alex. Thank you. Uh, and now what we are going to do, we are basically going to ng4 over our users and create a sphere, a different spheres for each user. So we are going to uh, ng4 for user in of let uh, user of users dollar. Uh, it's an observable, so we need to use the async pipe. Nice. And then we are going to attach the color attribute, so that's the attribute binding syntax of Angular, to user that color. Oh, that makes sense. So we're using the iterated user and we're just using whatever color we assign initially from the service. Right, and let's that do it the sense. same for the position. So here we have a little bit of a challenge because uh, position actually ex uh, expects an object when it's assigned uh, dynamically. So we are going to create such an object with x, uh, that would be the user x, y would be just uh, 1.5 meters above the ground, as we have here, and Z would be the user dot Z, nice. like Z from the movie. You remember him? Yeah. And since 
Angular doesn't really play well with A-Frame. We need to do some work around using a pipe called the A-Frame pipe. You can find it on NPM. And this pipe will just convert this object into something that A-Frame can work with. So hopefully, as soon as they save this, TypeScript is happy, so as soon as they save this, it will be scattered with balls and we'll be able to see how many of you are in there and how well this 3D thing scales. We haven't tried it with so many users. Um, I see one ball. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it's starting to reload for everybody. Whoa. So, yeah. Wow, wow, wow. This is crazy. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I think it's time to add a little bit more chicness, like more styling to the scene, yeah. make um, it more like 80s style. Uh, let's hope this uh, 3D won't kill my browser, though. Um, so let's start with the floor, actually. I want to um, use an animated GIF. I think it's, it fits well with the 80s, right? Yeah, it's, it's retro, right? Yeah, so first of all, we need to add an asset section to our scene. And in these assets, we are going to load a GIF. So we'll do IMG, uh, let's give it a GIF, uh, ID of, uh, that would be floor texture. And the source would be, uh, I already got it ready, uh, ready floor.gif, I think that's the name. So we're just, a asset is just us telling a frame that we want to import this and we give it an ID and a source so then we can reuse it throughout our A frame uh, semantic tree. Exactly, reuse is the key here. Um, and then we can change the plane that we created. Instead of giving it a yellow color, let's also remove the shadow that will improve the performance and we won't need it later. Plus, so, it's not retro, right? Right. Uh, and we can replace the color with just uh, material. And we'll use the GIF shader, which support, add supports for animated GIF, and tell it the source for this material is inside this floor hashtag, floor texture image. Now we are going to save, and if everything works well, we'll have animated GIF on this thing. Oh, nice. But it's a little bit too small for that floor, right? Yeah, shouldn't we just like make it the whole floor? Yeah, let's make it like really big, like 300 by 300 meters. How much that? One, 1,000 feet, I think. A lot. Uh, a lot. And also, we would need to repeat the texture, so it won't stretch. Yeah. So let's repeat it uh, 100 by 100 time. And I think we are getting uh, we are getting something here. Wow! All right, we are onto something, uh, or maybe not. Oh, I know. There is a column after repeat. It's like CSS uh, with A-frame styles. And now we got it to work. This is awesome. Let's do the same. Uh, let's give the sky the same treatment. We, we, we have a star texture for you. So that would be uh, the sky texture. And it would take the stars.gif. And then with the, star, the sky, we can say uh, the same material equals shader. Uh, GIF. This time I'm not going to forget the column. Yep. Uh, SRC would be the sky texture. And we'll repeat it uh, 5 by 10 times. Uh, so just it will be uh, more scattered. Let's save and see if we got stars in the sky. Have we, have we, have we? It's white and it's starry and it's animated. Yeah. It's dancing. So, so many balls. You're taking a GIF or GIF, or however you say it, and you are applying it in a 3D environment as a shader material in A-frame here. Right, there oh. are so many invaders, it, it, it scales. Yeah, it, it, it web like... scales. Yeah. Okay, uh, the web scales, yeah. So I think the next thing, uh, you are supposed to be invaders and just not just balls floating in the, this party space. So um, for that, we are going to use a 3D model of an invader. We are going to load it from uh, another asset. So let's create an asset, give it the ID of, uh, let's call it invader object. Mm -hmm. And the source will be, um, let's just close the tag. The source will be, it's inside assets, invader uh, 2.obs.txt. The reason I needed to use the txt extension is some limitation of stack blitz. Hopefully they will fix it soon. Other than that, it's great. But I think it's amazing that we're having an ID right now 
on the browser and we're collaborating with like everyone here. So yeah, that's cool. we couldn't do that without stack bits. I mean, you would have to deploy it to GitHub help and we will have to refresh manually. That's so 80s. Yeah. Anyway, uh, okay, so we are going to replace, replace, replace this spheres with a object model, yep. which basically uh, tells uh, A-Frame that we want to load an object model, that's a 3D uh, object format, and we only need to add a SRC attribute that will point to our uh, invader object. Yeah, so we're pretty much referencing by ID, huh? Like we did before, and yep. I hope it works. Let's see, let's save and see. Are we all invaders now? Are we, are we, are we? That was too easy, I don't think that's gonna work, man. Ah, uh, yeah, it was too easy, but I do see something. I think it's just the browser doesn't like the amount of objects it has to render right now. Um, yeah? Do you see it? How many of you see it? Most of you. So yeah. your, my computer needs to be replaced, I guess. Oh, so just like try zooming out. Yeah, no, I think maybe I'm not looking at the right direction or... But you see, it, that's what's important. Um, Try to me down a little bit. Yeah, you see the other invaders, though? Can you show me? Can you show me, please? Whoa, All that's right. crazy. Okay, well, uh, so it works. I don't know why it didn't work for me, but uh, it will probably work in the next uh, reload. And now what we are going to do, I think you are the invaders, and we want you to be a part of this 3D world we are creating. Uh, if it doesn't work, reload or use your friend's computer. Or we uh, start three times. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we want you to be a part of this invader world. So what we are going to do now, we are actually going to um, attach to your camera. That's your phone moving around. It's moving the A-frame camera. And we are going to listen for your rotation and reflect this rotation into Firebase. Let me show you. So we are going to, uh, first of all, let me... Uh, That's cool, because you have different entities. You have like the assets, you have the models, you have the plane, and now you're going to add another entity of a camera. Yeah, in order to take control of this camera, we are going to add another camera entity, if my browser will not die. Um, yeah, I think, I think it killed it. So, camera entity, do you want to come or not? Let's try that again. If not, I have some uh, cheat sheets. Okay, time for a cheat sheet. Don't tell anyone about this. This never happened. Yeah. Yeah, luckily we have this cheat sheet. I think my browser just gave up on it. Like, you see, uh, it doesn't do a syntax highlighting, nothing. Uh, let's try it and see if this works. Basically, what I'm doing here, I'm uh, listening, I'm taking control of the camera. Those loop controls basically tell the browser to rotate the camera whenever I rotate the phone. They are used for the phone version of uh, this. And the WASP controls, can you guess what they do? Let me control the camera with the keyboard, WASP or the keys, right? And then we have this rotation listener. It's another um, element that uh, extends A-frame. It's on NPM. And it will emit a rotation change event whenever I rotate my phone. Same for the position. And since these are just web components, we can use the event binding syntax of Angular to connect them to uh, events in our component. And wow. finally, syntax highlighting loaded. Wow. That's um, pretty cool. So we're abstracting out like physics into just plain HTML right now. Right. Wow. That's so cool. let's implement those uh, event listeners uh, in our code. So basically, I think I think it totally gave us up. Let's save and try to reload. Maybe this will help. Yep. And if not, okay. Let's put that one. Oh, now we can also oh, see the number go. of people connected. So, did it save the camera? Yes, we have the camera. Now we will probably have a lot of errors. Sorry for that, I didn't implement the uh, listeners before I saved, but That's at least I can see you. I could see you. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are having a performance issue here. Do you see this? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. 
Why, why, why like Should, it's... Could we have any shadow lingering around? Because those are pretty expensive. Actually, no, but if you see this NG4, you will probably notice that it renders the entire anime. Um... Uh, you need to track by it. Right, right. That's basic. How didn't I think about that myself? So we'll track by a user ID function and let's create this function in, in our controller if we can get there. And we so, can say. To explain the problem, whenever we are using an NG4, um, Angular, whenever there's a change detection, Angular has to re-render every single item because it doesn't know exactly what changed. So by tracking by in a specific property of each item, then it only re-renders the ones that actually change. And that's why it's faster because it doesn't have to do everything every single time. So yeah, for every user it has an ID uh, property that is populated by Firebase and then we are just going to track by, use this uh, track by user ID, yes, that's how we call it, create this function on our controller that will make the tracking ha happen. Now the browser is really, really sad because uh, still uploading oh. because I did something really bad here in terms of performance but luckily uh, sorry I killed your battery but luckily it now reloaded yeah. and why doesn't it work it does it just take uh, a little time there's yeah I mean there are like 100 oh. people on this Wi-Fi uh, plus there's almost 40 people uh, logged into the stack bit, so right right yeah. uh, so it's fast now it will probably log in into Firebase in a few moments and we'll see the users but first of all, let's implement the missing uh, methods uh, for the rotation uh, and orientation. So first thing first, let's uh, add this rotation change listener. And we are getting, uh, let's call it value, which would be uh, aframe.coordinate, not component, coordinate, which is basically an object with x, y, z. And then we can tell the user presence service to update my rotation with this value and it will write a new rotation value to Firebase. By the way, any, any of you seeing invaders on the screen? No? So we screwed up something? He's probably waiting for us to implement yeah, this Yeah, let's this see if, this, if implementing those methods help. Yep. Um, update my rotation, update my position. Let's save. I see a bunch of errors probably because of the missing events. And let's see. So right now we should have, uh, yeah, no longer errors. Yep. Though I still see a few here. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I, I think know. The async type goes up yes. before the track by us. So friends, we are doing it all together. If you see me do silly mistakes like putting the async pipe in the wrong place or forgetting track by, just let me know, or Alex will. Okay, I will save that and hopefully now we have invaders and those invaders are going to be all around the place and with high performance, without flickering, without, without killing my browser and yes, nice. there you go. No flicker, browser is still slow but no flicker and we have invaders. So they, they look a little static though, what can we do? So yeah, so now we saved, whenever you s rotate your phones, we actually save this to Firebase. You can see it uh, real brief. These are the uh, methods that are called. Update my rotation just updates the current user with rotation X and rotation Y. Same goes for update my position, updates it with X and Y. I see somebody has already got ahead somehow and is updating its position. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice. Um, so we just need to bind those new rotation and position to the users. So we have those uh, users here. Uh, remember, this is the object model and repeat it for each user. Each invader, yeah. Each invader. We already set a position. We now just need to take care of the rotation. So we say her dot rotation. We bind to the rotation attribute of a frame equals x would be quotes, yeah x would be the user dot rotation x, y would be uh, user dot rotation y, and z would be zero because we don't want you rot to rotate on the z axis. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, we don't want you to go sideways. Yeah. Um, can you do and that again? Hmm? Can you do sideways? You got it. I yeah. think I can. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to save this, so this applies to every single one of you. And I think now we should be seeing a lot more updates. So it's so good we implemented this async pipe.
to make sure that uh, we don't re-render everything on every update. And the Wi-Fi is having a hard time with all of you. Thank you for uh, choking the Wi-Fi. We will show NGCon what a group of VR heroes can do to the Wi-Fi. And still waiting for Firebase. So while we are waiting for Firebase, I'm going to, uh, does it show for any of you, by the way? Or did we screw up this one? No invaders? No invaders. I think we just need to add the pipe A-frame just to let... Oh, right, the A-frame pipe. Thank you so much, Alex. Yeah. Yeah, I told you. It's good to have you here. Thank you. So, uh, we now may get this to work. Thank you, A-frame, Angular, Firebase, God of Life demos. Please make it were anything bah, else bah, missing bah, bah. anybody seeing it oh there here you, you are go. here is everybody yeah. and i want you to rotate move around like yeah. somebody's dead who's that <laughs> the people on the floor i think <laughs> ah, okay that's the people on the floor yeah do you mind do you mind zooming out a little bit so we can see like uh, yeah i, I you can if you are using a, a laptop you can walk around with your keys yeah. i just killed my browser sorry for that uh, and you can do like amazing things. Now I hope you get better performance on your phones. Maybe you can open it on your phone so I will yeah, see it, uh, check it out. actually working. Um, yeah, I think that for the next step I will hide this preview. How do I do that? Close. I will hide this preview, otherwise we won't be able to write the next li few lines of code. So, but you have it on your phone, so it's all good. So I think one more thing I wanted to add here. Right now we are all viewing this scene from the center of um, this world. So you are also seeing your avatar, but it's not in your. You are not standing there where it should be. Still from your point of view, huh? Right. Yeah. So uh, since we already have your position, we are tracking the camera position, uh, and we know your initial x and y. Uh, because we chose them randomly, we can make the camera start at that position. So each one of you sees the scene from his own point of view. Uh, for that, we'll just need to do two things. First of all, we need to go to the app component, and there is another uh, observable we can subscribe to on the user presence service called me. And this observable basically... So that's me. That's you. No, me. No, that's me. That's me. Okay. okay. Right. Never mind. And we will subscribe to it and save the value to uh, my com component controller. Yep. This does me equals value. And let's define me. Me is of type a user or users. And now we should have uh, me uh, updated uh, in this um, in this. Uh, component and then we can change our um, controller our view so instead of just uh, placing the camera at the beginning at zero zero at zero and one six zero we are going to wrap it with another any entity and that will be the parent element of the camera oh you're kind of bringing the camera to the current user aren't you that's true I'm going to give the parent entity a position of Let's just copy paste because yeah, it's pretty much the same, huh? Yeah, it's like like I usually code, but I do copy paste from Stack Overflow. I do that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's change it instead of user.x and user.z to me.x and me.z. So now my camera is standing where I am at. I'm not gonna save it any at this moment because if I do you will all see a very big avatar blocking your field of view, and that would be you. Yes. You, yeah, right. So another small fix we are going to do, I think I forgot to close something. Um, this A entity right here. Oh, right, right. I always fall for that. So now it's happy. And I'm going to do another trick. I'm going to say for each of these user, it will be only visible if it is not me. So, right now I'm going to save, and you probably should see yourself, I will try to, I will risk open this myself, and you should probably see yourself teleporting to, teleported to, each one will have a different view from a different uh, position. Uh, I'm here. Some of you will need to turn around in order to see the other crowd, and 
somebody is looking to the sky and trying to starve you. Yeah. Yes. So, wow, so many invaders. Yeah. I think we are ready for the part where you jump. Yeah. Uh, so, for that, we are going to use observable. 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 Yes. yes. I win a cardboard. Uh, you already have one. Okay. So, uh, for that part, we are going to uh, use another service I created for you. We are not going to go over the code, but basically, yeah. it has uh, it listens to the device motions events from your accelerometer. So, if you are on the phone, you can actually jump, and it will make the avatar jump. And uh, we are also, with, uh, for those of you with laptops, because for some reason most of you have laptops, I have no idea why, uh, you can uh, also use the uh, space key. You yep. see, I filter by key equals space uh, to trigger a jump. And whenever you do, we just merge those two observables into a jumps observable. So you basically have the device orientation and the keyboard into a single observable, so the user can decide either to use their phone or their computer, and it will just work. Right, that's cool. true, Alex. So let's add this to uh, the code. Yeah, uh, so I want to uh, go through it quickly just to be uh, aware of time. It's 11.35. Yes. So let me quickly add this uh, jump detection is jump detection service. Please autocomplete me, please. I want to complete today. And we are going to subscribe to these jumps. So pretty much very similar to what you had before. Just right, we are subscribing. Jump, subscribe. Uh, would it be jumps or just, oh, there you go, jump. Yes, and whenever I jump, I want to update not just myself, everybody in the scene. So we are going to update the user presence service yeah. and say uh, set jumping with the new value. And what set jumping does is basically. But wait, wouldn't it would just be me that I want to just jump myself? Yeah, but I want everybody to see you jumping. Oh, I so see. it's a collaborative experience. So you want to let them know that I'm, you're jumping and not just see yourself jumping. That exactly, and that would update the jump uh, property of your user in Firebase. Okay. So once we have that in place, we know that we have a jump property for each user and we can visualize it. Let's start by visualizing it for ourselves. So we have this um, A entity with uh, your position and we are going to change the Y, the height of you, when you jump. Uh, we will do it just by saying, if me dot jump, then I want the height to be 1.5, otherwise it will be zero. Yeah, Make just sense. Yeah, just visualize the jump, and I want also to visualize the jumps of... Me. Of all of you, not just you, everybody. Uh, so we'll do it again here, copy paste, if user is jumping, then let's put it to three, otherwise 1.5. So I'm going to save and hopefully we'll have jumps. Yeah. Let's open that. And if everything works well, we'll see Invader. Will we? Will we? Will we? I think so. I think it's you know, over. I have an Ethernet cable. I could have used that and get super internet. Why didn't I? No worries. Uh, anyway, I want to see some of you starting to jump. So yeah. you can do it with your phone. Come on, guys. Get up. Let's do it. Or with your laptops. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. I am jumping. There you go. You can see. There you go. The, there is a big pile of, I think, avatars They're here. They're just hanging out in there. They're hanging. They're They're just talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. So anyway, you, before my browser dies again, let me close this preview. All right. So what's next? We need to show them some very cool effects. Yeah, so uh, I think for the next part, we are going to implement you as the master of ceremonies that send this uh, power blast to everyone. Yeah. Are you ready with your laptops and the slides? Actually, let's just do it here. Okay, okay, let's do it here. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tell them about our surprise. Great, guys. So, the, there's a physical aspect to this, which is we're going to be using a sensor. Uh, a biosensor, and I actually, I'm wearing it right now. You cannot see it, actually, if I just start. You are hiding it under yeah. your sleeve, it's like a true magician. A Maya sensor, uh, which is a, a gesture, co uh, gesture control device that connects via Bluetooth and sends socket events to our application. So this reads my muscle data, and it's able to detect whenever I'm doing like, um, like the double tap or a fist, or waving in, or spreading my fingers. 
And we thought it would be pretty cool based on the theme of the conference of Ready Player One. And uh, we're just going to be using this device uh, to be uh, sending some events to our 3D scene. Yeah, where we'll be sending pulses to every yeah. single one of you. Yeah, so uh, getting started with a device like this is actually pretty simple. Uh, we just need to import it from the Maya library and we connect to it. We give uh, it an application name that you can choose. And ultimately, we just listen into events, right? Because it's all about events. Um, so the events that I'm going to be using today are going to be uh, pretty much just waving in uh, to change some of the colors of the blast and then just put in my fingers to just, just throw a blast. So you're just going guys. like a magician. Swipe through the blasts and just throw them at the audience? Yeah, it's going to look super silly, cool. but it's going to be fun. So let's just do it. That's all, like it's all about fun. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I want to do first is just create an A-frame box. Uh, this box is just an indicator of where the blasts are going to be coming from, right? And we're going to have some position. And this is going to be pretty much just in the center of the screen. So I'm going to give it 0, 050. Zero. So very high, so everybody can see it. Yeah, and then I'm going to give it some radius of about half of it. Um, and then ultimately, I want to bind a component, which is a fireball, which is where you're going to be seen as the blast. Um, and that is going to be pretty much an attribute, a fireball. And then I am going to, uh, like you already did before, I'm going to pipe it as A-frame. I do this before, so I don't forget. And it's going to be an object. You learn from my mistakes. Oh, we all learn from our own mistakes. So we're going to have a color here. And that color is going to be the result of a observable that I'm going to call the blast color. Obser observable. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> blast color. So um, basically, this fireball is just another A-frame extension. They are called A-frame components in order to confuse us with Angular components. But they are more like directives in Angular, remember? Filter, 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 filter. Yep. So, same here. Uh, and you can install it from APM, and it adds a cool fire effect to your objects, as we are going to see now. It's like animated, generated texture. And what did you just do, Alex? Oh, Why I'm did you delete my code? Videos. I worked so, hard to get it. <laughs> I know. I did it sometimes by mistake. Oops. So, uh, That's okay. I, still I want to do two things. I want to get a blast color that I'm going to be getting from a blast service, and I'm going to get my actual collection of blasts over time. So let's just so get blast the color is whenever you swipe and blast is whenever you throw a ball, right? Yeah. So pretty much, I'm going to use my service. Um, and this service reads the data from uh, Firebase, right? Yeah. This is all connected to Firebase, and I have an application separately on my computer. We'll show is, it uh, when you will be master of the ceremonies. Yeah. And let's do dependency injection and inject uh, our blast service, which is going to come from our blast service. Uh, then we will be able to access it, and we'll be able to just do the get the blast color. Uh, similarly, we're just going to do uh, a collection of blasts, and this is also going to be an observable coming from our blast service. This is all about blast, guys. Service. I'm having a blast. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm going to get the blast. Um, something uh, to take into consideration is that our service is going to be returning uh, a collection uh, of blasts uh, from Firebase. So I'm just calling the functions that I have that they're going to be filtering for the right type of gesture and they're going to be applying the right color. So I think with this, I just need to uh, save this one here. Actually, let me go to our HTML because I need to add the actual um, blast. And so you are cheating. Well, I just can you explain that, what happened here? I just typed that super fast. That's how I code. I'm sorry. Not sure. You're yeah. a wizard. That's what happens when you do this for so long. <laughs> so um, this next snippet that I injected is pretty much a, a entity of a sphere, and we're going to be using it in before iterating over our observable blast. So whenever an observable uh, is added to our collection. Uh, it's going to iterate, it's going to add it here uh, via Angular MD4, and it's going to add some basic animations of just like uh, scaling to make it bigger. So we should be seeing the sphere uh, growing from the center of the square, and ultimately it's going to uh, throw a small sound that we prepared, probably. 
Uh, we don't have the sound, so I'm just going to remove it, right? Yeah, it will be nicer if we won't have everybody's phones playing the random sounds yeah. while you throw the... But I can do the effect, like I can do... Oh, bloop, bloop. you'll do it yourself. Yeah, cool. I can try. Um, and ultimately, as you can see here, we have the attribute fireball that we used before, so our blast has the same color as our box. And in theory, this kind of should be all wired, right? Let's try to save it and let's show them your uh, blast uh, app. Yeah, is so, it open on your uh, yeah somewhere? So I have it right here, and we probably um, maybe a different window. Yeah, it's in my local host. Oh, so uh, you still need to connect it with your meal? Uh, it's right here. Actually, it's really vibrating because when it connects, I can feel it in my arm. So this this, this looks good here. Uh, but you want to open the preview here so we can see the blast? Yes, and I will show them uh, what you are doing while you are blasting. All right, let's just zoom in on my computer there. Let's do a command blast. Yes, is it working? Yeah, so if I do a fist... First of all, let me find the center where... Okay, so this is this uh, fireball element that you put, this box that you put in the center, right? Yeah. And there is somebody floating, he's like jumping and walking at the same time. I'm gonna yeah. jump too. All right, cool. So, uh, how do we change yeah, colors? Do you guys remember what gesture do we do to change the colors? There you go. Yeah, so... So can you swipe? I swipe... If I swipe, it doesn't wave detect in. it. Oh, actually, maybe you need to calibrate it or something like that. Let's see. Okay, something happens. There you go. There's green. If I do it again, wow, it changes to a lime green. If Does do it, it work again, for you as well? Can you guys see the color change? And that's coming directly from my muscles, which is pretty cool. <laughs> wow, right. So from, from these muscles, right you here. You just sent a blast. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just gonna swipe through different colors. Um, until I find one that I like. Which um, one do you? I, I like this one actually. No, one more because it's a little dark. Oh, there you go. There's the blast. <laughs> and then if I do the fist and then I do the blast, we should start seeing some blast. So you are sending blast to everybody here. Yeah. Let's, let's actually, I think we can put it full screen now. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, new tab, kill my GPU. You know what? Uh, we still have like five more minutes. I will add another wizard wheel. Let's make this. Uh, uh, wow, well, this is going to kill the GPU. But invaders are animated, right? Yes, they so are. So let's add some animation to our invaders. Um, so, since we want you to do some homework, we are not going to go over how we do it. You will have to look at it at home. Or if you are really fast readers, you will be able to see that I am creating a new observable. It's an one, I think. Yes, I'm creating a new observable that emits true and false every half a second. And then I'm going to use this observable to uh, switch between two models of invaders. Uh, so that would be uh, an in two, I think. You see, I I'm not lying about my abilities, I'm just Oh, no, telling right. I just type fast. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, and then the last thing we are going to do, we are actually going to change our object model. So instead of being uh, loading the model directly here, you want we'll, to bind to that observable, huh? Right. I'm going to use uh, to change this to be an. Well, maybe I will better close this window. So is the browser dead yet? I'll close the other tab first. So who killed my browser? Maybe. Should I refresh? What do you say? Oh, it just worked. Perfect. So we were here and we wanted... Wow, this music is really putting me... Right? Rhythm. It's like getting you in the zone, huh? Yeah, I'm in the zone. Let's make this an entity so we can put the different who killed the music? models inside. <laughs> we are doing it for performance reasons. Yeah. Uh, and then inside it, we are going to uh, put two different versions of the uh, invader. One of them will be uh, with the first model object. The second one will be with the second model object, uh, invader one, zero, and one. And we are going to uh, change the visibility according to the uh, animation observable. So they will alternate. Let's save that and hope for the best for a final demo for today. Open it in a new window live. 
imagine what happened if I got a blue screen now. You know, that's Windows after all. Anyway, I see a lot of Anime. invaders and they are moving? Nice. Yes, yes. Yeah. And where is the ball of power? So Alex, can you send us some blasts? There is a huge pile of dead invaders here. I don't know what happened. I am sending the blast. So, uh, so now we are going to do the invader ceremony. Everybody is going to jump with their phones or their laptops, but hitting the space whenever there is a blast. Ready, Alex? Let me know when you are ready. I'm ready, man. Ready, player one? Ready, player one. Ready, set, blast us. Wow, you are jumping in sync, sort of. Am I? Okay, I'm not the only crazy one, Jai. That's good. Hey, there, there is a friend over there. Yeah, everybody is jumping. I think it's amazing. Friends, see what we managed to create in just 50 minutes with Angular, Firebase, RGX, Observables, Observables, and A Frame. So, wait, let me see if I get this right. We are thinking, I'm thinking about moving my muscle, which translates to me, moving my muscle. We are capturing the muscle data from our brain, and then we're sending that to the cloud from my computer. You're receiving it everywhere in your devices, in a 3D scene that you can navigate virtually with your physical cardboard, in a space where you have space invaders that can jump, are animated, <laughs> in a way that is retro and kind of working Yeah, so to summarize... In our band? I, yes. I, I didn't hear what But you next said. year, it will be yeah. the swag. Can you say that again? So here are a few links to get more pretty content. We'll share these slides with you. Uh, I think Alex summarized it really well. And the source code is on GitHub. We'll also share these links with you. And there is also a playbook where you can follow each thing that we did with the explanation step by step so you can try it at home if you have a few uh, hundreds of uh, bucks to spare. And to f uh, finish this exciting experience, I want us all to take a photo. Are you ready, our cameraman? I want yeah, us all right. to take a photo in and front of... And let's take a of, selfie, you and I, too, with everyone. Yeah, oh. in front of this amazing experience that we created. So everybody, please come here. Wait, and a selfie first. Selfie, yes, a selfie, and then everybody come, start coming here for the selfie. Come, 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 join us. <laughs>